Get ready to dodge all the space junk flying your way. Jump up, duck down, lean left, lean right, and clap to fire. Here we go. <laughs> So today we're going to be talking about someone in the Bible whose name was Peter. You say Peter? Peter. Now Peter, he was a disciple. Can you say disciple? Disciple. And Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. And Peter loved Jesus so, so much. He loved him a lot. And he, he never thought ever that he would ever turn his back on Jesus because he followed him and he loved him so very much. And Mr. Colby, I do have the pictures big back there. So very good. And it might help if maybe one of the lights or it just work, looks better that way. So I've got it here, but you guys can also see it up there. So Peter was a disciple of Jesus and he loved Jesus so much. And he followed him. He was a follower. So you might hear the words disciple of Jesus or follower of Jesus. Does anybody know how many disciples that there were? Brantley. Twelve. twelve. Let's count to twelve. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There were twelve of them. And Peter was one of them. And there were many times in the life of Jesus that Peter would, would follow Jesus doing different things. Well, there was one time where the disciples had just finished having a meal with Jesus. And Jesus told them that he wanted them to go with him to the garden so that, that he could pray. So they followed him. And I don't, yeah, I think this picture, here it is. They, he said, come with me to the garden. And they followed him to the Garden of Gethsemane. Can you say that? Yes. Garden of Gethsemane. Now, this is the time right before Jesus was going to go to the cross to die. And so Jesus knew that this time was coming. And he pulled three of the disciples, Peter being one of them, aside. And he looked at them. And he said, my heart is heavy. Do you know what it means if someone says, my heart is heavy? Does that mean that their heart that pumps blood is like making them fall because it's too heavy in their body? Do you think that's what it means? No. Who thinks they know what it means for Jesus to say, my heart is heavy, Claire? Maybe a little bit scared. Jesus had emotions too. Because he was human. He was God the Son, but he still was human. Jacob, what do you think a heavy heart means? Yes. 
Boys and girls, Jesus knew what was about to happen to him in just a few hours, and it made his heart heavy. And he told them that, and he said, Come with me and watch, and keep watch as I pray. To keep watch. They were supposed to sit there and be watching, because he knew that somebody was on their way to get Jesus. And so he asked them to keep watch. And Jesus went to the garden, a place in the garden alone, and he started to pray. And you can see in the picture, Jesus does look like his heart is heavy. But I'm going to read to you from God's true word, the Bible, what his prayer was. And you guys know that in Pier 252 and here at Canopy Roads, we believe that the Bible is God's true word. It is the only true book about Jesus. There's lots of books out there that people use in their religion that aren't true. But the Bible is God's true word. And this is what Jesus says while he's in the garden. So he says, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. So basically what Jesus is saying is, Father, who's he talking to when he says, Father? Who's God, because Jesus is God the Son. So he's crying out to his Father. If you ever say Abba, that means Daddy. Okay, and if you call, it is, and if you call it God Abba, it's a very uh, special name for him. So he says, Father, all things are possible for you, please. Basically, when he says remove this cup, he's saying, is there any other way does this have to happen? Did you know that Jesus asked God if there was another way to pay for sin? He did. But then he says, not what I will, but what you will. And he's saying, not my will, God, whatever you want me to do, I will do. And he has had a heavy heart. Yes. God and Jesus are the same. You got it. They're both in heaven right now. You got it. You are a smart boy. You're right. Yes. Well, that's what belief is, Jacob, and that's why believing is so important. That is a very valid question. Then there are people. Yeah. 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 That's right. Come on in, girls. We got two seats yeah, right up here. That's a good question, Jacob, and I love Mr. Stevens' answer that one way that we know God is real is how he's changed our lives. And so, Jacob, is if you know Jesus as your Savior, then if he's changed you, then that's something that you can say about him that you know he's real. But, but you, you have, have a very, that's a very good question because a lot of people don't think it. But you have to believe on Right. No there doubt. Be any doubt. No but doubt. When they stepped out onto the water, when Jesus called them out onto the water and the waves, and he stepped on the water, as soon as he doubt, what happened? He, he sunk. The water. So you can't have any doubt. You have to trust a hundred. That's right. So Jacob, the word believe means to trust completely. Everyone say that. Believe, believe. means trust. Means trust. Yeah. Completely. 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 So I like that he said, no doubt. If you have a little bit of doubt about Jesus being real, then you don't fully believe in him. I so that is a topic for another time that I would love to talk to all of you about. And I think that's a great question, Jacob, and I'm glad you asked that. But anyway, right here, Jesus is crying out and he's asking, is there any other way? But he knows that this is what's supposed to happen. And not much after this, Jesus walked right over to the disciples. And when he went over to see them, guess what they were doing in the garden? Does anybody know? <laughs> show me what they were doing. Can you show me? Aiden, you were right. They were sleeping. And three times, three times, Jesus went over there and said, why are you sleeping? Three times he did that. 
So they were supposed to be keeping watch, but they were over there taking a snooze. Their eyes got heavy and they started to sleep. And then, not much after, they were sitting there, maybe after the third time that Jesus said, why are you sleeping? And here came the Roman soldiers and they were on their way to arrest Jesus. When the Roman soldiers got there, it made Peter mad. And so Peter got so angry that he drew out his sword and he sliced the ear off of one of the Roman, uh, got, one of the Roman soldiers. His name was Malchus. Can you say Malchus? Malchus. And Malchus' ear got cut off. And Jesus said, enough. And he picked up the ear and he put it right back on Malchus' head and Malchus was healed. And Jesus looked at them all and he said, it's time. This is all part of God's plan and I must, I must go with them. And this made the disciples run away. They did not really follow Jesus. They fled because they were afraid that maybe they'd be next to get taken because they were a follower. But Peter loved Jesus so much that he actually did kind of follow. So while, the, while Jesus was being uh, questioned by the, the religious leaders and he was going through like a trial for the things that he had done, but we know Jesus did nothing wrong, right? But they were trying to find reasons to get, it's okay. They were trying to find reasons to get rid of Jesus. And so Jesus went through a whole night of trials and questioning. And while this was happening, Peter was out there in the courtyard. The courtyard was right outside and he was listening to everything that was happening inside. And while he was out there, a young servant girl looked at him. She recognized him. And I want you to hear what she said to him, okay? So in the same part of where I was reading before, in Mark chapter 14, if I turn the page and go to verse 66, this is what it says. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warning himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus the Nazarene. So she's saying, hey, aren't you one of Jesus' followers? Can you say that with me? Hey, aren't you one of Jesus' followers? What do you think Peter's going to say? He loved Jesus. Claire? He said, the next verse in 68 says, but he denied it. If you deny, you're, you're saying the opposite of what was said to you. You're saying... I No, I don't, I, I don't know him. I don't agree with that. You're denying it. And he said, but he denied it, saying, I neither know or understand what you mean. So he told them, I don't know him. And he did that not once, not twice, but he did that three times in the courtyard. And Jesus had predicted that and told him, Peter, before the rooster crows three times today, you will deny me. Do you see the rooster in the background? He's kind of faded back here. See him? Yes. And on, when that rooster crowed, he knew, it. he knew it. And there is a verse in the Bible. It's not in Mark, but it's in one of the Gospels that says that Jesus looked at him when that happened. And Peter was crushed. He knew Oh, I love Jesus so much. And he told me this was going to happen, but I didn't believe it because I love him so much. How could Jesus ever love me now that I have done this to him? But what's our word up? Do you remember? God promises to love me forever. Word up. God promises to love me forever. Even though this had happened and Peter denied Jesus, he still loved him no matter what. But Peter ran out of the courtyard. The Bible says that he left weeping. Weeping, you're like crying really hard if you're weeping. 
and he knew that he had just hurt the Lord Jesus by denying him. Well, shortly after that, the Lord Jesus did go to the cross, and he had nails in each one of his hands. They put nails in his feet, and I know this might make some of you sad, but you know what? It's important for you to know about it, because if Jesus did not die on the cross, my sin, your sin, would never be allowed to be forgiven any other way. There's no other way except when Jesus died. That's why he went. That's why he knew that he had to die. And so Jesus did die within, that, within all that time of the, being arrested and going through all the trials. They found him guilty, but he really didn't do anything wrong. It was all not true. And then he was nailed to the cross. And he died. And you know what happened after that. What did they put him in? What did they put him in? They put him in a grave and they rolled a big stone over the door. They put some Roman soldiers in front to guard it so nobody would take the body or nothing would happen to it. Because Jesus was well known by a lot of the people and was popular. They didn't want anyone to take it. But then, sit in your seat. But what happened on the third day? Who knows? Yell it out. What happened? He rose again. He came back to life. And that morning, some women came to the grave. And they were bringing some spices to kind of prepare his body. But when they got there, the stone was gone. And there was an angel sitting there. And the angel said, why are you here looking for the living among the dead. And the angel said, he's not here, but he's risen just as he told you. And so the women ran to tell the disciples that Jesus was gone. Well, do you think Peter, who denied Jesus and ran away and was so sad about everything, was going to believe? Do you think Peter believed her? Jesus told them he was going to do it. Do you think he believed? Yes. He didn't at first. And so the Bible tells us that Peter and John ran to the tomb themselves and they looked and they saw that he indeed had risen from the dead. Jesus was gone. And they saw this and they realized that what he was saying or what the women said was true. And Peter got to touch the linen that Jesus was wrapped in for himself. And he saw that Jesus was alive. Yep. And then, not much after this, Jesus did appear to them again. Because after Jesus came back to life, he appeared to people to show them that he was actually alive. He wasn't a ghost. He really was alive. And there was a time where the disciples had been fishing and Jesus appeared to them there, and he wasn't a ghost, but he appeared to them and he pulled Peter aside. So he said, Peter, come here. And they maybe stepped over to the side while the other disciples were over, over in another part of the, the beach or wherever they were fishing. And he said, Peter, do you love me? What do you think Peter said? Yes. He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said again, Peter, do you love me? Yes! He said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Maybe even thought, why do you keep asking me? But then Jesus again said, Peter, do you love me? Yes! And he said, yes, Lord, I do. And after that, he realized how much God, that Jesus actually really did love him. How many times did Peter deny Jesus? And how many times did Jesus ask him if he loved him? Three. Three. And so Jesus did this to show Peter, I still love you. It doesn't matter what you have done. I still love you the same. He loved him, even though Peter had denied him. And Peter realized that Jesus loves him no matter what. Word up. God promises to love me forever. Stand up and let's say it. Get up, get up. Word up. God promises to love me forever. 
He promises that. And if you're, you can sit down. If you're here today and you would say to me, Miss, Miss Jenna, I know Jesus as my Savior and I know that Jesus has forgiven my sin because I have believed in him. Then when you do something wrong and you think that, oh, God couldn't love me anymore. I did this horrible thing. You can remember this promise. Jeremiah 31, 3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And you can thank God for his love. But maybe you're here today and you would say to me, Miss Jenna, I don't know if I'm going to heaven because I don't know if I have really believed in Jesus to forgive all my sin. Remember that sin is, let's do it together, sin is anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's law or makes him sad. We all do things that displease God. Put your hand down for just a moment, okay? And because of your sin, boys and girls, you do not deserve to go to heaven, nor do I. We don't deserve that at all because sin and God can't be in the same place together. And because of God's love for you, Romans 5, 8 says, God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners... Christ, if you're an Awana, you know it. Christ died for us. He died for you to show his love. There is nobody else probably in your life that has ever died for you. But Jesus, he did. And if you would believe that and you would say, Jesus, I want your forgiveness. Please come into my life and forgive my sin and help me to make good choices and to please you in everything. He promises he will, but you have to believe all of it, not just a part, all of it. And then when it's your turn to die, you get to go to heaven. You don't really die. Did you know that? Christians don't really die because we get to go to heaven and live forever and ever and ever. Heaven is a second life. It's life after our life on earth. Mm -hmm. And we get to live in heaven forever with God. Well, but, but Eli, I've done bad things and I'm going to heaven. So it's about believing. Believing is the difference because nobody on earth is really good. So we all do things that aren't right. And so heaven is a place that you can be one day, but you have to believe in him. And if that's not a choice you've ever made, then you can always talk to one of us about that. Or your parents, we'd love to share more. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? And if you have a question, maybe it has to do with heaven or something, come, come ask us afterwards, okay? All right, put your hands down. Listen, I do care about what you're thinking, but you can come and maybe ask us when we're finished. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this time. Thank you for Jesus that showed his love when he died on the cross. Thank you for this reminder of the story of Peter and how even though Peter denied Jesus three times, Jesus still reminded him that there's nothing he could do that would change his love for him. And that's the same for us. And that story was years ago, and it still applies to us today. I pray that you would help us to never forget how much you love us and help us to show our love back to you because of what you've done. And I ask your blessing over the rest of our time together. In your name I pray. Amen. I'm Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, and I want to tell you about how God promises to always love us. One night, 
I had just finished eating with Jesus and all of the other disciples. Afterwards, we were walking through a garden, and we could tell that Jesus was upset about something. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to do exactly what God had planned. He looked at me, James, and John and said, My heart feels heavy. Will you stay here and keep watch? I need to pray. We weren't sure what to do. We had never seen Jesus like this before. Jesus walked away by himself. He knelt down and began to pray. Father, if it is possible, don't let this happen to me. Father, you can do anything, but do what you want and not what I want. It had been a long day and we were all exhausted. As we sat down to keep watch, our eyes got heavier and heavier. Three different times Jesus saw us sleeping and woke us up. The third time we saw a crowd coming to arrest Jesus. This made me furious. Jesus had done nothing wrong. So I jumped up to fight the soldiers and drew my sword. And without even thinking, I cut off one of their ears. When Jesus saw what I had done, he said, enough. He bent down, picked up the man's ear, placed it back on his head, and he was healed. Then Jesus said, this has to happen because it's God's plan. The disciples and I didn't know what to do, so everyone ran away. I started to run too, but I wanted to see what would happen to Jesus, so I followed them. Jesus was brought before many important people. Some of them were trying to find a reason to have Jesus put to death. Well, they made things up just to convince everyone that Jesus was bad. As I was standing outside listening to all that was said, a young girl saw me and asked, Hey, aren't you one of Jesus' friends? Then I said something so horrible something I would definitely regret. I said, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Two more times, people asked me if I knew Jesus. I ended up shouting at them, no, I don't even know that man. I started to have the most horrible feeling deep inside. Tears began pouring from my eyes. How could I hurt Jesus in such a way? How could I say I never knew him? Would he still love me even though I had done something so wrong? I didn't understand that part of God's plan was for Jesus to take the punishment for all of the sins that I had committed. In fact, all of the wrong things we do were placed on Jesus when he died on the cross that day. But because of God's love for Jesus and because of his love for you and for me, he did not let Jesus stay dead. Three days later, one of his friends named Mary came running to find me and John. She was so excited to tell us that Jesus was alive. I couldn't believe it. I ran as fast as I could to see for myself. And it was true. Jesus' body was gone. Some time later, Jesus appeared to me and some of the disciples while we were fishing. Jesus pulled me aside to ask me a question. Peter, he said, do you love me? I responded as quickly as I could, yes, Jesus, you know that I love you. Jesus asked me again and even a third time. With each question, I let Jesus know that without a doubt, I loved him. And in that moment, I knew that he loved me too. Even though there were many things I had done wrong. There is a promise for us all in Jeremiah 31, the second part of verse three. The Lord says, I love you people with a love that continues forever. That is why I have continued showing you kindness no matter what you have done wrong. Remember that God promises to love you forever.